Folks, welcome back to Flatiron's Tuning. We're here in the shop. We have our 2024 WRX Project car on the lift here. And in the process of doing the, the Brembo brake upgrade on this, we had the car on the lift up and down a number of times. And something caught our eye. And that, it's this right here. It's the, the travel of the suspension in the rear. Now, uh, right up front, I'll tell you, I'll warn you, you know, once you start paying attention to suspension travel, and especially droop travel, it can kind of take over your world. So, so you have been warned. But we're looking at this. And you know, as we're putting the car up in the air, it just seems like this car has a ton of droop travel. And so we wanted to compare it to the older cars to see, you know, is it really significantly different than the, than, um, you know, the, the previous WRX, the VA, the GR, and so forth. So we brought in those older cars, we measured them, and we're going to dive into what we found. Before we do that, just want to say, you know, if you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content that we're putting out, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Check out our merch underneath the, the channel here. And the very best way to support this channel is we can keep you know, coming back and make content like this for you is to head over to flatirons.tuning.com. If you've got anything up there that you might need, that business goes a long way to helping us keep the lights on and keep coming and making this content for you. Now, with all that being said, let's dive into it. So what we did, so the guys here, we had a 2002 WRX with stock suspension on it that had lowering springs. And then uh, we had Carter's 2014 WRX, a GRWRX with completely stock suspension. So we brought those two cars in and compared it to the droop travel uh, with, the, with the VB here to see, like, is this actually more droop travel or, or less, the same, what is it? It's now at like 17 and 7 eighths. Okay, go up. So that is 17 and a half. About 14 and an eighth. Yep. <laughs> 17 and three quarters. So what we ended up finding in terms of droop travel was this is actually about in the same ballpark as the other two cars. Basically three inches of droop travel seems to be about the norm across all of these different models. This car has just under three inches of droop travel. The GR WRX had almost exactly three inches of, of droop travel. The GD WRX had just about three and three quarters inches of droop travel, but Morgan's car has got three quarter inch drop springs on it. So if the car is lowered three quarters of an inch, you're gonna have an extra three quarters of an inch of droop travel because you're you're losing that compression travel with that lowering spring. So really three inches pretty much is, seems to be the average across all of these, these models, which is interesting. So then what we got to looking at was the actual suspension geometries of each car. So we brought, you know, we put them all up in the air and we looked at, you know, the, the uh, multi-link and the McPherson suspensions in these. So let's take a look at all of those and then we'll end up with the VB here and talk about what we're seeing that's different. So we've got uh, Carter's stock 2014 WRX up in the air here. So this is the, the multi-link suspension that was basically unchanged or not significantly changed from 2008 all the way through uh, 2021 um, on, the, on the WRX and the STI. So it, can, it consists of a lower control arm and notice here on the GR, the strut is basically sitting, you know, pretty close to the wheel and it's attached to the lower control arm inside. Uh, we have an upper control arm and then we have this trailing arm here that extends and, and attaches to the front. Um, and then there's a tow arm. Tow arm, is, it's almost like high rod for a steering rack on the front suspension. And that's just to control the toe of the rear wheel as it goes through its travel. Um, the significance here is you know, the, the length of, of the lower control arm and, and the, the plane that it is moving in and then the trailing arm in the angle that it is. So this is different than the GD suspension. We're going to look at that here in a second. Um, there's a little bit of an angle between the two. They're not completely perpendicular, but the, the trailing arm is, is definitely moving in a different plane compared to the lower control arm and then the upper control arm. And so that creates a little bit of tension uh, as the knuckle moves up and down because you've got the, the arms that are kind of pulling away from each other uh, or, or pushing against each other. So that, that basically uh, interference between the two, the movements of the, the lower control arms and then the upper control arm, that's what limits the travel with the multi-link. The advantage of that is you have the ability to really control, the, the manufacturer has the ability to control what happens in terms of camber and toe to the rear wheel as, it, as the suspension compresses or extends. So that gives you a, a lot more fine control of, of the tire, and that's where the, the multi-link rear suspension can be a lot more uh, efficient in terms of grip. 
Um, and that's what we that's what we saw with the GR chassis when it came out. That it just seemed like it had a lot more rear grip than the GD chassis did. And it's it's because of the suspension design, but in terms of rally use, uh, because of that lack of travel, you know, it's it's all of these different pieces that are all kind of moving in a little bit different way that interfere with each other. That's what limits the travel. And so that's where for off-road use, when you're trying to get a lot of travel going, that's where this was an obstacle. So now we've got Morgan's car up in the air. This is a, a GDWRX. So if you're an old school Subaru person, this suspension looks way more familiar. We've got the two lateral links and then the one trailing arm for the suspension. You can tell that the, the trailing arm is basically perpendicular to the lateral links. So they're, they're moving in, in perpendicular planes. So that does limit the movement somewhat. Um, the trailing arm, you know, as the wheel is gonna extend, the trailing arm, it's gonna pull the center line of the rear wheel forward. Once you kind of reach level, then it, the, the rear wheel center line is going to be centered. But then if the wheel compresses again, it's going to be pulled forward again in the wheel arch. So the trailing arm really controls that center line movement. And the lateral links, now with two of them, that kind of resists that movement more. Uh, whereas the multi-links where you just have one lower control arm, there's less resistance to that, to that movement of the rear wheel. But ultimately here, you've, you've got a perpendicular plane that these two uh, suspension components are moving in. And so that really does control a lot of how, how the, the uh, toe and camber changes with this rear wheel as, as it goes through its motion. The GD cars and, and, and the earlier Subarus, they have a McPherson suspension in the rear, not the multi-link. So the only suspension linkages are down here in the lateral links and the trailing arm. Then the strut attaches to the top of the knuckle and the strut and spring are an integral part of, of the suspension. Whereas on a multi-link where you have the upper control arm it is not an integral part of how the suspension behaves uh, because uh, the strut is just kind of along for the ride. It's just dampening the movement because it's mounted inboard. Here, the McPherson strut, I mean, it, is, it has a direct impact on, you know, the, the camber and toe of, of the rear wheel based on how, you know, the, the angle that the rear strut is sitting at, the, basically how the, how the rear strut moves as it compresses and because it's connected to the top of the knuckle, so it will pull the knuckle in, et cetera. Um, worth noting here, so Morgan has got the white line adjustable lateral links. So from the factory, there's only toe adjustment here. Um, there's only just an eccentric bolt here. But with these adjustable lateral links, if you want to get more control over, you know, camber and toe, this is what you have to do or one of the methods to get actual um, camber adjustment back here. This is, again, a tried and true rally suspension in, in part because with the McPherson uh, suspension in the back, the rear strut is much longer. Um, and in the GD cars, it mounts much higher up in the car, whereas on the GRs and in the VAs, VBs, it mounts inboard, uh, further inboard on the lower control arm, and then it mounts closer to the floor, um, and so that the rear strut gets much shorter. And, and basically having that less travel to work with um, and the, the McPherson's, uh, sorry, and the multi-link suspension, where you've got more linkages that are kind of working against each other, it kind of limits the travel. and in, uh, the other thing on rough terrain with the with the multi links, because the strut and spring is mounted inboard, it ha the the wheel has a mechanical advantage over the strut, and so the strut is shorter and has less overall travel. And then the wheel, again, can can uh, has an advantage of working against the strut and spring, so the strut and spring have to work a lot harder to control the movement of the wheel. So you would need higher spring rates, more aggressive valving, that sort of thing. That's what makes it a lot more challenging when you have you know, when you're going over jumps, trying to soak up a lot of bumps, uh, a lot of big bumps, when you have just the, those limitations on that inboard strut. All right, so we've got the VB back in the shop, up on the lift, and I'm looking at the suspension here. So this part, the, the lower control arm, the strut placement, all that, basically unchanged from the GRWX. Uh, we, we know that, for instance, because this, the part number for this lower control arm, you know, especially for the aftermarket ones, it's unchanged. So we know that the length is the same, the mounting points are the same. The, the mounting point for the strut is basically unchanged. The length of the strut, pretty much unchanged. We're, we're gonna throw some coilovers on this here soon, so we'll, we'll know very shortly about that. What is different is this trailing arm. On the GDWRX, the, the lateral links in the trailing arm is basically a perpendicular. With the GRWRX, largely still perpendicular, but they started to move that trailing arm in a little bit. The VA, well, we don't have one of those handy, but they made the, the, the trailing arm a lot shorter, and they started to move it inboard, but then this is, this is a different trailing arm again, and I, we believe that they've actually moved it even further inboard for this, for this uh, forward mounting point. We, we know that this is different because there's, there's no cross application for this trailing arm. And it just looks a lot longer than, than uh, you know, what, what it has been before. 
The most interesting part is if you get underneath and you look straight up, because they've, they've brought this arm much more inboard and angled it in. It's much more of an acute angle than especially like the GDWRX where it's, where it's a perpendicular. And through very crude measuring, and, and I'm, I do mean very crude, but just uh, kind of tracing everything out, it looks like this is about twice as close to, to the center compared to like the GRWRX, for instance. If you look straight up from, from the bottom and you compare the, the, these lower arms to the upper arm, there's a lot more parity between basically these, these inward uh, mounting points of the lower components to the upper control arm as well, which basically makes us think this is going to behave a lot more like a double wishbone suspension compared to a multi-link or even um, the McPherson on the GD suspension. What's happening is this, this trailing arm now, instead of really controlling the center position of the rear wheel as it, as it goes through its travel, it's really gonna triangulate the center position and hold that knuckle in the same location. So basically keep the wheel straight as it goes up and down significantly more, which is what you would expect with like a double wishbone suspension, for instance. And so we've, we've seen people that have taken these on, on dirt and they seem to have really good luck with them. It seems like the rear suspension is behaving better um, on dirt with these VBWRXs compared to the previous ones. And so we're really curious about that. We're gonna get the coilovers on and that's one of the first things we wanna, wanna see is like, what does this do on, on a dirt road, on a little bit of a rough road, rough surface? Because um, if it really does handle better, I think a lot of it's gonna come down to this, the changes in this rear suspension geometry. Um, it's, it's clear Subaru's going a different direction and, uh, and we like that, it's interesting. Hopefully this car is gonna be a lot of fun on dirt and it seems like the early results are but that is the case. So um, you know, again, thanks for your support as always. We're, we're putting coilovers, coilovers, easy for you to say, coilovers on this car soon. Um, so, so keep your eyes open for that. We're, we're gonna bring you those results here soon. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, thanks for your support as always. Until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.